Once again, why occupies called 99%? It is because 1% of the population owns more than 50% of all the capital. And now it's not that those 1% they worked harder than the others, that they were more intelligent, that they were more talented than the rest, that they deserve to have 50% of all capital. Like, it's not, they didn't deserve it, it's just that they were born in certain families, and that they worked in certain high up elite corporations and banking systems, so they didn't deserve the money, they just have it. But now the problem is, this is so much money that they can buy media, they can buy private armies, they can influence politicians, they, they, they buy lobbyists with this. So it's really hard to go against this 1%. And now also, what does 1% think that a good life is? A good life for them is that every one of us keeps on consuming. Because as long as we consume and we don't question, we give them money. Because like all brands that we buy off, they're mainly owned by a few people, like a handful of people, they own all products that we buy. So as soon as we buy something, we give them more money. The profits are rising. And that's why when we walk down the street, we have everywhere advertising. Now, I never asked that advertising should be everywhere. Because if advertising is everywhere, this is propaganda. This is brainwashing. This is like in a communist regime when everywhere there are, there are advertisements saying that you sh this, this politician is really great or we live in the best world possible. But our advertising is just saying us that we're not happy enough, that we're not beautiful enough, that we're not that we don't have a car that is big enough, that we're not thin enough, that we're, like, it's just making us feeling uncomfortable and we think that we can buy happiness. But you can never buy happiness, because I must admit, when I live one week in Igloo and in Yurts, like we do at Occupy WEF, in community with other people, we share our food, food, we eat together, we cook together, and then we talk before we go to sleep. It's a really simple life. Like, we don't have a lot of material, but I'm a lot happier than if I'm an isolated little atom going through the city and chasing after some new stuff because fashion now tells me that you really should wear this kind of pants because if you don't wear this kind of pants, you're not cool. But I mean, I don't think that coolness is in what you buy because this kind, if you have this kind of thinking, you're just really making the big corporation taking more advantage of you. And I think as a, we should like emancipate ourselves and say no, we have really enough. We don't need more. I mean, the Western world is saturated. We have everything we need. And now what we need is a happy life. And a happy life is not when you have more things. A happy life is when you have time, when you do things that make sense, when you, when you say what you really want to say, when you stay up for the values that you have, when you're in communities that work together and not competitive, isolated people competing against each other to be a bit better than the rest because this is not going to make you happy this is going to make you very sad and at the end depressed and then you need antidepressiva and then you're in the whole circle of more giving more money to Novartis because you're not happy enough and there are people telling you that you're crazy that everything is okay that we're in the best system possible that you know what can you expect people are greedy no we're not like we 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 don't need to believe what they tell us we, we and if you open the newspapers you think newspaper they should be here to inform you about the state of the world and then you open the second page and there is a big advertising for a new car and then you open the third page and there is a new advertising for something else but this is not information this is brainwashing and we don't need brainwashing anymore we can think for ourselves, we can talk to each other, and with the internet there is also a way to inform you about the real stuff. There is a way to inform you about the truth. And now there are certain people in governments and corporations trying to censor internet. This is really dangerous because they are starting to take away the freedom and the democracy that we are starting to get. And also the Occupy Pie movement was inspired by the internet. And it's it's starting, it, 
a new movement is starting that people start to know that we don't need experts who are telling us what we should think and how we can solve problems and the web is exactly like it's just it's just that the most extreme situation when just rich people I mean you can buy a ticket for the WEF if you have half a million dollars I mean but if you have half a million dollars it doesn't mean that you're better than the rest that you know how the future should look, li look like but the thing is that if you think you can decide the future for everyone else and you can you can decide the future for half a million dollars what kind of person goes there and makes decisions for other peoples. This is not this is not democracy. This is dictatorship of an elite. And dictatorship of an elite was never good. And if this is not going to change, it will take a revolution. I mean it's just normal that people are revolted when they see that some people are just that's never enough because if you have one million, you want to have two million. If you if you run one corporation, you want to run two corporation. If Nestle buys all the water of one African country, they want to buy all the water of another African country. And at the end, we live in a neo-colonialism state as we are now because the third world, the resources are being grabbed by all industrialized countries. And which means when, for example, refugees are coming to us, African refugees are coming to us, what they actually do is they just follow the resources that we took from them. We took the resources in Africa, so they come to us because, I mean, they have such a rich country, but we're exploiting them. We live in a colonialism state. And no one is talking about that because it's not kind of bad for us. But I think really we should emancipate ourselves, stop consuming in this way like we do we should start thinking about what makes us happy what do we really want of this life is consumption that will make it at the end of the day when you're dying you really think oh it's such a good life i bought each year a new car i was always dressed in a fashionable manner do you really think that is what you remember at the end of your day no i think we should stand up for our values and we should not stop even if everyone is telling us that we're crazy we should not we should not believe that we're crazy, we should not believe that we're criminals just because we're treated like criminals. And so I think everyone should join the Occupy West movement and come here to demonstrate with us because we're not crazy, we're not criminals, we're not terrorists. We're just people caring for the world, we're people caring for the future, we're people caring for the generations that will follow us, we're people caring for that there's so many people starving right now and all the other people are occupied with buying a new iPhone. I mean, this is really... I don't want to live in a world where like those big gaps are big like that. It's just not healthy for us. It's, it's hard to live ethical, to be an ethical living spirit when those kind of injustice is taking over the world. So don't let the system take you down and join us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.